Hello everybody, Vector here. Today I wanted to talk about Picotron. So this is a program that's been in the works for a few years now, and I wanted to see more tutorials about it, so here is a quick overview. As a disclaimer, I am not an expert on this program, I've just messed around with it a little bit, but I did want to have a tutorial on YouTube that would go over the very basics because it can be a little bit confusing to navigate at first, but this is a really cool program and I hope to see more people use it. So the first question is, what is Picotron? And Picotron is what the creator called a fantasy workstation. Uh, it could be considered a sequel of sorts to Pico8, where Pico8 is a fantasy console, which is sort of a program that emulates a console that never existed. Uh, Picotron is a program that emulates an operating system that basically never existed. So if we go over here, this is the desktop. Uh, it works pretty much just like any operating system you've used. Uh, we can double click this in order to open up the file system uh, and there's this txt file called readme and you can double click on that to open it up this is basically a tutorial page that comes with every copy of picotron and it is very helpful uh, we will go over a little bit of what's in here so we don't need to read that for now so the file system is about what you would expect uh, you can double click on folders to go into them you can press the arrow over here to go back out and there's these special buttons on the side. This one shows the current cartridge. We'll get into that in a minute. And this goes back up to the top level. Over on the left, you can change the display to be icons or a list. And on the top left here, there are extra options, which depends on the menu. And then you can hit this to X out the window. If you have Picotron on your computer, your desktop might look a little bit different from mine. That's because you can change the wallpapers and a lot of other settings. So if you go over here on the top left, you can click that and go to system settings. And here we can change the color theme along with the wallpaper. So if you've ever used Pico 8, this would be pretty different from what you're used to. Uh, Picotron is meant to be a lot more focused on the engine itself where you're able to make a lot of customization and changes to basically whatever you want. So changing a wallpaper is, you know, um, pretty cool, a little bit basic, but the way that the program is made is that you can actually change pretty much anything you want inside of this engine. So if we go back here, go to system, um, you'll notice these funny little Lua files called startup and boot. And yes, if you double click that, you can go into the program that starts up the program itself. And I'm not going to mess around with anything in here, but you could hypothetically change the startup of the system if you wanted to. So I'm just going to right click this and hit close tab. And you'll notice that we're in a different window now. So this is the scripting window. Um, this is where you'll be writing your programs. Um, a fun, fun thing about Picotron is that the code works basically exactly the same as Pico8. Um, all the functions and, you know, just the, the language in general, Lua, of course, you could basically copy paste code from Pico8 and it'll just work here perfectly. Um, so we can change tabs by clicking on these over here, or we can hold, uh, the alt key and then press left and right in order to switch back and forth. So next is the sprites tab. This one also works basically the same as Pico 8, where you can select your color over here. You'll notice that there are more colors in Pico 8. Um, and then you can switch over sprites like this. However, you'll notice this little funny thing here, which you can click on and change. This actually allows you to change the size of your sprites, which is very different from Pico 8. Um, so you can do some very, very cool things with this. Uh, just like before, four different tabs. Um, you can switch through and each one is numbered so you can access it in the code. I won't be going into too much detail for exactly how to uh, do all of these, partly to keep things quick and partly because they work basically exactly the same as Pico 8. And you can find basically any Pico 8 tutorial and it'll work almost exactly the same. So this is the map tiles. Um, you're able to build out a map 
with whatever you want. You can also change the size of the map, just like uh, the sprites up over here. So that makes the map wider. And there's even a layer system if you really want to mess around with that stuff. The fourth tab, as you can expect, is the audio window. And they did merge the SFX and the music tabs. So this one is pretty complicated. Um, I have not messed around in here enough to fully explain. But by default, you're in the SFX menu. So this is SFX0. We can put down whatever we want, and it works like Pico 8. Uh, press space to play the sound. And then we can change the speed up here by clicking and dragging with the left <laughs> with a left click. And then over here, you'll notice patterns. So this is the music. Um, you can have multiple SFX. And then change the SFX up here at the top, and this will play them together. So as you'll notice, there are a lot of layers here. You can have up to eight layers at the same time. Um, so that's a good number of options for complexity. Uh, so this is pattern zero. So in order to play it in the program, you just do music zero, for example. Let's type out something really quick here for some demonstration purposes. And then in order to run it, you just hit control R. And in order to get out, you just hit escape. So I hit escape twice there, and it returns me back to the screen. And if you want to, you can save it. And when you do, you'll notice that it'll bring you back to the file system. So I could say this is a separate file. And if we go back to the desktop by clicking this one, you can see that it's here in the current uh, cart. So once you're able to get around, you're able to um, make some pretty neat stuff. Uh, the last tab is just a terminal. This is basically uh, the same as what you're used to if you've used Pico 8. And I think that's about it. I can show off a cartridge that I'm still working on. So um, you can actually bring pretty much whatever cartridge or uh, PNG you want into here by just finding it on your computer. I can show the path on the screen or put in the description maybe. Um, you can also just right click and then press open host OS folder and that should bring you there. So you can double click a P64 file just to uh, open it up. Or you can right click it and then press load cartridge and that will actually set everything here to uh, whatever's in the cartridge. So you're able to switch back and forth between stuff pretty nicely. Hit control R to run and then we can just, you know, play our game. So you can hold out just to go around, um, hit out left and right, and you're able to switch back and forth pretty easily. So yeah, that's about it. Um, if you mess around in here, there's just a lot of really cool stuff. But a lot of stuff here is just kind of out of my... Um, you know, it's, it's really, it gets really complex when you really start looking into everything. But this is a really cool system. I hope to see more people uh, get into it. I'm excited to see what people do because unlike Pico 8, it has a lot less restrictions. Um, you can see that it can use bigger sprites, bigger screen spaces. Um, I don't think it has a token limit. I know they have a limit on the system, but I wouldn't be able to tell you what it is. So I'm really excited to see what people do with it. So yeah, uh, that's about all I got. I hope you all have a wonderful day.